All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe, and this will be the video that hopefully helps everyone out there. Let me explain. My goal for degreeing this cam is finding the intake center line or checking the intake center line. And it's a pretty simple process. I actually messed it up on this the first time checking it. I did not have the bottom dot of the cam gear in line with the top dot of the crank gear. I was off by one tooth. So we checked all it, checked it all over and it was majorly off from what the sheet recommended. This is supposed to have a 106 center line. So what it did have, I'll just show you. So step one, let's degree the cam or check the center line of the cam with it being correct. We're gonna rotate the engine until we get maximum intake lift. And the needle on this will start to go backwards. Getting close. I think I had my zero pretty well there. Okay. So I saw it didn't move. Let me re-zero here. So maximum lift on the intake lobe. Step two, we're going 50 thousandths one side of it. So we watch our indicator. Right there, we record a degree. Looks like 153. So I'll write that down. Now we will go opposite direction, 50 thousandths past. So we watch the needle spin her over, get it real close as I can. Right there. And we record that. Looks like 63. There's some beautiful math for you. Add them up, divide by two, it's 108. So I know right now I am two degrees off from what the cam says. Here's our example. So it says getting a larger number than what is on the cam card means the cam is retarded. So getting 110 instead of a 108 indicates the cam's two degrees retarded, so you would have to advance it two degrees. So I need to advance this two degrees. But here's what made me think. So if you've got an old worn out 400 in the corner or 440, whatever, any engine, and it has slipped a tooth, what has that done to the cam timing? Let's find out. So if you had a very worn out timing set, this side of your chain would be very floppy and loose. This side would also be stretched. So lengthening this would then move this dot that way. So it changes the relationship between the two. I'm going to move this dot up one tooth that way and we're gonna check it, degree it, see what it is. So if I hit this from the right angle, the dots still look lined up. But I wanted to show you if I actually bring that to straight up and down. It's one tooth off. So I'm gonna set my degree wheel up and I'll just put it at zero right now. This should be top dead center. And I found top dead center using my piston stop. So the piston stop method. I've shown that in a different video if you need to see it. But if you're not absolutely sure that your zero degree mark is set at TDC, you have to try it again because it's critical to proper cam alignment. So we find our max lift again. I went past it. Go to 50. Record. 170. I'm sorry, 169. I'll write it down. Uh, 
opposite direction. We go back to zero. And see, I'm going to continue turning the same direction. So that'll get us 50,000. It's the opposite side of the top of the load. Come on. Right there. Record our number. 77. What is that? Six, four, that's a one, 246. Half of that would be one, two, three. So 123, about 15 degrees, isn't it? And that would mean getting a larger number than what's on the cam card means that cam is retarded. So you would have to advance that 15 degrees in order for it to be back to the correct spot. And with our cam being retarded, it says it shifts the power curve up approximately 200 RPM for a four degree change. Well, since we have 15 degrees, our intake valve gains, exhaust valve loses, all timing events occur later. So we're occurring way later now. So it's always a good idea to check your timing chain and degree your cam. And just one more for fun. This was a different gear set that I had um, I did a video talking on my 406 about this stuff. Um, I think it's a new chain. It's really pretty tight. And you can see my marks. And I've got my straight edge, as Ed recommends. Get it there. I mean, most people in the world would agree that is lined dot to dot, as they say. I'm going to... Set my degree wheel back up. We'll check this. All one. right, there she is. I'm going to go ahead and go past 50. It's a little bit. And then I'll back up to it. That's how comp recommends to do. Coming back. Which this chain is so tight, I don't think it truly matters. Right there. Measurement, 163. And now we continue, we come back to our zero. And then we go back up to the 50. Catch the other side of the lobe. Right there. I'll call it 72, 72. There's that math. 163 and 72 gives us 235. Divide that by two, 117.5. And that would be one of the old school uh, timing sets that, uh, that would be a crucial one to check. I just wanted to give you that for a crude reference. I'm going back with my 440 source kit here and we'll get her degreed one more time if you're in a rush and make that mistake then you could be that far off and it could be different for any kind of cam or length of the chain or different engines i'm not saying it's a generalization but i am saying it would affect you if your engine had jumped a tooth or if you had installed this incorrectly the cam timing on newer vehicles do have a phaser of some kind that can actually adjust that cam timing uh, on the fly, basically, for better performance or economy or efficiency or to better improve their EPA regulations or whatever. But I appreciate y'all watching. I hope this was informative, and I'll catch you next time.